Hello again. It's me. It's me. With some brand new green candles I made. Kind of a funny green. I'm not crazy about the green on these candles, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> um, I'm here to talk about something else, a little, a lot more complex in it. A subject that I've been kind of putting off. Uh, I don't enjoy talking about demonic things, but um, um, Jesus dealt with the d demons and things like that, darker things in his ministry. Well, all right, there it goes. And it, it was part of his ministry, def definitely a real part of his ministry. And uh, the last video I made, The Unfading Beauty, I got very emotional in that, but emotional in a good way. Uh, the Unfading Beauty, of course, being Jesus Christ on the cross, but deeper than that, not Jesus Christ, the man, the Lord, the Son of God, hanging on the cross, dying, suffering horribly amongst sinners surrounded, you know, but deeper than that, look deeper, look at the love he had for you, for me, and probably worse sinners than either of us. Um, are my candles going to fail? I, yeah, oh, odd. Well, I've got a backup plan. You know, I'm sorry to let this interrupt me, but I, with this, I put too much dye in these, and I don't like mica, M-I-C-A, dye. Um, plugs up the wicks. So I'll just light another one. See if this one wants to. The Unfading Beauty. And I'll try not... Well, there it goes. I'll try not to let that distract me again. Forgive me. Please. The love of Jesus Christ that he had for us sinners, even in his darkest, most agonizing, lonely, despair moment on the cross. The only... Un when I soul search myself about everything in life, our lives, my life, anything that comes up that doesn't die, let you down, walk off, fade, break, corrupt, you know, the most beautiful thing I could come up with that is unfading is that, the love of Jesus Christ. So when you look at the cross, like a crucifix with an image of a man hanging on a cross, Jesus. Look deeper than what your eyes are seeing. Look at the love only he could have. Because if you and I were nailed to a cross like that, innocent, uh, dying, felt he even felt abandoned by God the Father. He had so much, he had physical agony going on, an emotional agony going on. Yet he loved us. I would be, I would be angry. I think in, only the Son of God could have that kind of love. That's the unfading beauty, and that plays into this. Uh, I didn't know what to call this, but it's really the opposite of the unfading beauty. Uh, it's about uh, demonic attack versus uh, demonic possession. And I know these days that sounds like stuff right off the movies. And a lot of people really don't think it can happen anymore. Like in the Bible, when Jesus dealt with the man who was possessed. And uh, he was out and living and he, they tried to chain him up like he was mentally ill, but he just broke the chains. And finally he wound up living in a tomb out in a graveyard outside of town. And of course, when Jesus found him, he was all his... His clothes were gone, you know, because uh, clothing and modesty is, is something of a virtue of the Lord, as we see in the, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve uh, ate of the fruit and their eyes were open. 
the first thing they realized that they were stark naked and they, they covered themselves before the Lord. That shows it's a thing of God, and that's how God knew instantly, you know. Um, I've had, all right, how did I get to this? I'm part of a Catholic forum where people just pose questions, and then we discuss people, and there's somebody that oversees it, moderates it, and, uh, you know, so... I don't know who moderates it, but whoever's in charge of the page. But somebody asked the question, how can a Christian become possessed, demonically possessed? And there was a lot of people joking around about it. You get kind of flippant answers sometimes. And I, I said, I've been attacked, you know, several times in my life, demonically. And I definitely uh, don't play around Ouija boards or any of that stuff. I never did, ever. Nothing to invite that in. But I've been attacked, and uh, it's been pretty severe. And uh, a few of them engaged me in that and kind of dug deeper. And I was explaining some of my demonic attacks. And one that come to mind that I really never talked much about on here yet, and I thought I would cover that and see where it goes. I know where, where it goes, but uh, prayerfully we'll see where it goes. Um, the place I lived in before I lived here, where I'm at presently, I was an old trailer, single wide trailer, dirt cheap, but really old trailer, out in the country, outside of town, about five miles. Uh, and my place was surrounded by woods on all sides. And uh, Jen lived there with me, and before she was there, I, I lived there alone. And... <laughs> It was just dirt cheap, and I liked the country. But that land and that, that whole area right where I was at was incredibly spiritually active, and some of it was negative. And I had, I would say, an attempt at demonic possession. You tell me what you think it is. Um, I was living there alone at this time, and I already knew the place had issues. I, I could go on and on about that place and the land around it. And it's really pretty bizarre. I, they could make a movie about it, you know. It's pretty bizarre. But I didn't let that uh, frighten me. Um, I stayed there anyway alone, and I just tried to put it out of my mind. And I said, I said my prayers, and I left it to God to let him handle it. Because those kind of things are his battle to fight for us. We just have to, you know... Trust it to God and say our prayers and make sure we keep ourselves right. You know, because, uh, you know, it's, Christ said Satan travels the world looking like a lion, looking for those to devour. But you don't need to be afraid uh, because in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7, For God has not given the spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So, you know, those hard times at that place, um, they didn't turn me from God. If that was the devil attacking me, it made me turn to God in faith, in prayer, and in trust. I trust Him. I'll get to this demonic attack. I think it was an attempt at a possession. But I used to sleep in the very back of the trailer where the master bedroom was in this old single wide. And behind the master bedroom was a woods, forest, uh, that I didn't know it then, but there used to be a farm house back in there, and it burned down, uh, I think in the 1950s, I found out. I think there was a loss of life. Um, I couldn't find much about it. But, you know, I wasn't the first person to live on that land, but there was really almost no trace at all that there ever was a house there. They really cleaned it up quite a bit because I'm usually pretty keen at finding these things. But the woods back in there, I felt like... I didn't feel I was being... I was threatened, but I felt definitely... Um, I'm not the only one that 
really should, needed to stay out of those woods. Uh, they just didn't want people back in there, they being spirits. This is going to sound a little far-fetched, but this is what this place was about. And uh, there's a few people that, that would vouch for this. One of them is a spirit now herself, and some of them aren't. So I remember I used to sleep in that back room. Let me back up, sorry. This has to do with a black mass, a sooty black nebulous mass. And I used to see it since I moved in there in broad daylight, more than once, not all the time. This didn't, this didn't happen every day, but it happened enough, these things. You know, I'd have days where nothing happened. This isn't like, like the movies where the pace on movies, it's always going on. No, I'd have weeks that nothing happened. But then things would happen, you know, you just, you never knew when, knew when or what. So it kind of kept you a little apprehensive in your home that you're supposed to feel at peace. But I saw this black mass circling my place. And that little trailer, you know, if I saw it there through the windows, I could see it, there's windows all around, you know, so I could see it go past these windows, and then I'd see it go past the other side, and I could see it go around. So this thing was circling my place. I didn't know what it was. Um, one time my friend Amy was there visiting me. Broad daylight, summertime. We used to get buried in snow there, buried up to our waist. This is summertime. Broad daylight, cloudless day, and she's talking to me cooking, and she, I'm just standing there looking out the window, daydreaming while she was cooking up some lunch. I was home for lunch, and she was staying with me at that time. Or visiting I'm not sure which but she was cooking and talking and then that thing crossed went right in front of the window where I was standing there staring out the window and she's like blah 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 sorry Amy she won't watch this I don't think she does she'll be all right with it and she was talking to and then as soon as that crossed in front of me in the window she stopped talking she was kind of speechless and I looked at her I said what she said I saw something I said what did you see I didn't tell her what I saw. She said something black. She said it moved across in front. I said I saw it too. So I knew it wasn't just me. So something black was circling my place. Now I'll get to this story. Sorry it took so long. It's the way I tell stories. Um, so I was sleeping in the back room by myself. I had a great big queen size bed. I had it on center blocks, right? <laughs> hey. Uh, I'm a big guy. I don't know. I had it on center. I had built my own bed frame out of center blocks, but it was well up off, you know, the floor, like two center blocks high with uh, plywood and boards. Pretty sturdy. But sometimes I'd be laying back there on that thing and it would be shaking. And I'm in the place alone. I'm in this place and the whole thing's, it's shaking. And I get out of, off the bed like, what's going on? It's, I was wondering because my washing machine was in the next room next to this bedroom, like if the spin cycle was on, a little off balance and the washer was shaking, but the washing machine, nothing was on. And as soon as I got out of the bed, it was just the bed was shaking, not the, not the trailer. And this happened. I thought it was pretty odd. I'd, I'd say some prayers and I just trusted to God. Now to this attack, finally. And this is freaky, all right? This is... Kind of, it's very weird and very freaky. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be weird for me to tell it. And I'm going to tell you what happened because that's why I'm telling a story, a story so you would, you would know how it can happen for whatever. I was sleeping one night alone in the place and uh, I remember my window like the very back of the trailer would be like right here and the windows were the window was open. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I don't think it does. And there's moonlight coming through and I'm sound asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night choking like <gasps> something like somebody was trying to stuff a sock down my throat. Something was in my throat, through my mouth, in my throat and it was like pushing trying to get down into me. And I got, uh, uh, got up out of bed 
and something bl a black mass came out of my mouth. A black mass came out of my mouth, and it was kind of nebulous. It was about maybe that big, but it was kind of like a, a moving, morphing cloud came out of my mouth, and then it shot straight down through the floor and vanished. And that, that's what, then I, when it came out of there, that's when I, I stopped choking. But this thing was trying to enter my body through my mouth. <sighs> this is strange. But you've heard some of my stories where I had demonic attacks, like recently when I was praying for my dear Jen, going on a spiritual warfare path for her. And uh, I had a demonic attack after that, followed by blessed assurance, I call it. And I've had the other demonic attacks, which was called Bigfoot and Whitehall. Story 52, 53, and 55. Uh, that was another type of demonic attack where the possession didn't take over my mind. And I was able to fight it off. Um, it never fully took, took over me. I fought it off. I, it never had possession of me, but it was trying to. And I told that story a few years ago. Look up Bigfoot. I know that's what they call it in Whitehall. This goes with the land there. And possibly this thing I just talked about goes with the land there because the land was extremely spiritually active and some of it wasn't good. I mean, there was an angry man in the woods. Jen heard him. I heard him. I heard him a couple of times. And a raging, lunatic, profane, angry person yelling at the top of their lungs. And you could never find anybody. There's nobody lived around there much. I had an attack. Uh, I don't know if it was demonic, but it was definitely a negative spirit. Look up the story of the stone house where evil resided. It definitely was a, a very negative entity, probably demonic. It attacked my friend, it attacked my daughter, and then when I was there alone, it definitely attacked me, and I have scars from that one. I wasn't hurt seriously, and I think I was watched after, too. By the grace of God, I was defended. I'm losing track. But I've been attacked before, but never possessed. What would have happened? You know, all right, back to this incident where I woke up choking. I choking. It was like somebody was stuffing. I, somebody was trying to stuff something down my throat, into my lungs, into my body. And I got sat right up like that, and it, it just came out, pure black, quite clearly, and it just dropped straight down on the floor and vanished. What would have happened if it would have made it in? What would have happened to me? Would I have been possessed? I took a lot of comfort. This is what, you know I said some prayers after this happened. And I took a great deal of comfort that it could not enter me. It couldn't. And I thought, I won't try that again. It can't. Because, you know, if I'm of the Lord Jesus Christ is with me, Christ isn't going to let that happen. No way, not to his own. Jesus Christ is not going to let that happen to you either. And there are more subtle ways people get attacked. Um, but these things exist. And I see how Lewis of Screw Tape Letters had a quote, and I'm, pardon me while I look it up. I think some of you already know what I'm going to be looking for. Bear with me. I found it. My printer is my printer's that. Yeah, this is easier. All right, uh, C.S. Lewis. I stand corrected. He wrote a book, a number of books, but um, he was a Christian author, and he wrote a British author in the thirties and forties and fifties, I believe. But a book my mom gave me when I was a teenager called The Screw Tape Letters, I thought was very good. I really read that book over and over and bought it for some of my children when they were teenagers. But this is out of that. This is what he said. Oh, come on. 
There are two equal and opposite errors in which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. That's by C.S. Lewis from the Screwtape Letters. Uh, look into it if you, you're not familiar with it. It kind of gives an, uh, an idea how the devil can bring a good person, man or woman, down uh, through their lifetime in many different ways, other than a direct assault like what I'm telling you about tonight. That was definitely a direct attack. I'll read it one more time. C.S. Lewis. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race, humans, can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. So, I was going to tell this story, but I wanted to tell the story of the unfading beauty first before I got into this dark stuff. But Jesus dealt with this stuff. It's in the Bible. It was part of his ministry. So it, it needs to be covered. So I just told you about a demonic attack. What would you call it? That I had probably six or seven years ago where it actually tried to enter my body through my mouth, uh, which sounds bizarre, but... I mean, it, well, I was just felt like I was suffocating. I couldn't breathe. Like, uh, like some, you know, it was something was, it was trying to force its way down through my uh, mouth. And uh, it's just, I, I got up like that. I sat up in bed, and it just came out right in front of me. And it's just a nebulous black mass kind of moving about maybe that big and just like fluid just dropped right down into the floor and vanished. And I said, you couldn't get into me. That just proved to me that I'm still part of Christ's family. Because if I wasn't part of Christ's family, it probably would have succeeded. What would have happened then? You know, I would probably would have gotten maybe physically ill. Maybe I would have become a different person. Who knows? Maybe I would have gone insane. Maybe I would have died. Who knows? But the fact that it couldn't get into me gave me, actually, instead of fear, it gave me comfort. They couldn't do it. You know, it's, it just was validated to me that I, I'm part of the family of God. And I had a lot of other things happen there. I feel like I could recover that. You know, I had so much stuff happen there. And uh, people that were there with me, uh, some of them experienced stuff too. Stuff I didn't even experience, they would tell me about it. You know, when they were there and I was at work or away or in another room, I would hear from other people. But the people that lived there before me, I talked to, they never had a single thing happen. They said they never had anything. The one guy, actually my landlord, I don't think any of his family are going to watch this. And if they do, let me know if you're offended. I shall make amends. But my landlord, who was a good guy, a good friend of mine, used to say, uh, I used to ask him about the place because, members, he had owned the property for a while and he knew the people. I said, did anybody ever have anything happen here? And he could catch that I was a little apprehensive about the place. And, um, yeah, you're the rough guy. I liked him a lot, honestly. He got that I was a little afraid, apprehensive, whatever. And he looked at me. He says, what are you afraid of, man? This is a big, he's a big burly guy, man. He's, he says, what are you afraid of, man? He says, just animals around here, that's all. Like, you know, you know what? This, God bless him and his family. But I, you know, the woods I told you about, that I learned to stay away from the woods, well, he was back in there working. And um, one day, he didn't, and I came home at night, and I found him dead where he'd been working in those woods, and I found him. He'd had a heart attack, and uh, he was digging up a septic tank to replace it because he owned that property. He was a good man. I, I looked up to him like my older brother, and I really liked him a lot, and uh, that, was a, that was a rough time. So 
So these things can happen. But God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And the thing is that I would guess the takeaway for this is that when I talked about what I've found, and I'm sure you see it too, if you're a Christian, I know you know, you know, I just felt like bringing it up, the unfading beauty. Look to the love of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's like his personality. Don't see the man hanging on the cross. See the love. I mean, the man too. We're not denying that he suffered horribly for us. But we, people like us, me and you, we put him there. He had to die for us, to make us a way for us, for our sins, you know, to make a way for us. You know what I'm saying. But look at the love of Jesus Christ. And that love is still alive today. It hasn't changed. Unfading. From the moment that he hung on that cross at Golgotha, his darkest moment of pain and despair, that love was still shining there like a, I used the candle before, but like a bright light without wax dripping, hopefully. Sorry. If you have that and you look at that and you pray to him, I pray to God all the time when I was in that place and I still do. When I, before I made this video, you better believe I said some prayers because I'm talking about this stuff. I don't want to invite that, you know, in. So I pray to God, I shine, Jesus, shine your light in and around me, protect me, and bless this. And I might say whatever you want me to say, I don't know, you know. But if you have that love, that unfading beauty, that that thing that was trying to attack me, to enter me, to possess me, couldn't. And back to the Catholic Forum, when I started this video talk, where I was describing to people what had happened, and there was a bunch of them that were interested. And like one guy took a particular interest, and he said, but it didn't possess you. You were never possessed. I, I had to think about it. I never really thought about the difference. He said, you were attacked. You weren't possessed. And I said, yes, you're right. And he said, well, don't tell people here you were possessed, because there's a difference. Christians can be attacked in many ways. I just told you one, well, that black thing, actually, can you imagine that come right out of your mouth? You're choking, and then in front of you, and then drop down into the floor, like it became, it was fluid, you know? I think Hollywood has stuff like that. But you know what? I thought, I think they're not making it up. Some, some point they seem, people seem to know what evil is. But it, I'm not the first one to experience these. Thank God it's rare. Hopefully when Jesus Christ comes back, it'll be gone forever. Not part of this, ever part of this realm again. But I wasn't possessed. I was attacked a number of times in my life. Three times at least. Possibly I would say that thing in the stone house. That, that wasn't trying to possess me. That was trying to hurt me, injure me. Uh, seriously injured me. So that was an attack. But it can't, where there's light, it, it can't occupy that. The light, light and darkness don't, don't go together. Even in pitch black, if there's a little bit of light, it's not truly pitch black. And I think demonic stuff to me, is the opposite. It's like the absence of light. Definitely the absence of love, hope, anything positive. It's all negative. Uh, when I had a couple of those attacks, I could sense. I could sense what they were about, and it was extreme, overpowering negativity, anger, rage. Loathing, a, a, a loathing of humans and anything of God. And we're made in God's image, right? And Christians, we have the love of Christ. And we're, we try to do Christ's work, hopefully, every day when you have a chance. Whether it be a talk on YouTube or to talk to people 
or try to help somebody out or encourage somebody and tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, and I've had the opportunity to do that in person with somebody recently, and I was actually pretty amazed that this person was actually very receptive and, God willing, uh, seemed to be hungry for what I was talking about, about Jesus Christ. And this is an atheist that I had an opportunity to talk to. So you got that going on in your life. You know, so long as you're not inviting it in, I think you don't need to be afraid of anything. So just hang on to that light, that unfading beauty, that light and that love that, that is the person of Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. That was on that cross, agonizing emotionally, physically, and loving us as only he could. Like I said, excited love. Like, he thinks we're pretty cool. He's like really excited to know you, to know me. Loves us very much. I don't think it's a living love. You know, it's not like I love them, they're covered. Well, that's there too. But it's also, I love that person, you, because he thinks you're pretty neat. Not pretty neat. I hate that word, neat. It's so small. There's something about you that's very, very special. That's you. You know, you've, you've felt that way about somebody at some point. I think magnify that. And that's, he had that love. Like, no, he said, I'm going through this because I love you. I love that person. And I definitely want to see them. I want to be with them. I want them to be with my family forever because there's something about you that he really likes a lot. That's valuable. Very, 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 obviously, extremely valuable what he went through, the Son of God. So sometimes we don't see it ourselves. I know I don't quite often. I, I don't feel too lofty, really, at all. So there's a story about not the unfading beauty, but the opposite of the unfading beauty. What would that be? I couldn't come up with a title. If I think of it, I'll tag it on here. The darkness, perversion. the absence of all that's good. All right. Hang on to the light. Stay in the light. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ, even in your darkest place in life. You could be in a submarine sunk at the bottom of the ocean that hasn't imploded yet, but all the power is out, and there's no hope of you getting out of that thing alive. The light of the Lord Jesus Christ is still with you. Or you could be all alone in one of these places that call them a warehouse for people that are dying up on the sixth floor of some hospital or nursing home. And you're not, you know, the light of the love of Jesus Christ is the same for you. He sees something very special. You are special. Let that shine in you. Let that light live in you. Live in that light and let it guide you. Let it, let it become the medium that you live in and grow in. And the things I talked about tonight, that I don't know why these things have happened to me, but they have. And I'm sharing it with you. They, they do exist. It couldn't possess me. And it can't you either. Unless you do something to let it in. All right, so good night. God bless each of you. Um, if I don't, I'm posted accordion stuff. Different subject. Because I've been playing accordion lately. But I've been playing around with artificial intelligence, AI art. So I'm going to do a talk about AI and just a talk at some point. Because it's definitely uh, like a new technology that is definitely going to uh, be a good or a very bad thing for us. So, 
my last video where I did this really gloomy, it's a Scottish funeral dirge, so that's why it's dark, and that's why I had the black hat on, and this stuff here, it was Halloween decorations that I hung up, you know, and I just, I left them up for the videos. Um, not that I celebrate Halloween, but I did a, a beer review on a Halloween beer that I didn't post it. Um, all right, I blab on. Um, but if you see that, uh, you can look at that gloomy video, and you'll see this the artwork on there. Some of it's good, but it's all there's a little something weird about all of it. Like somebody's arm is missing, or somebody has their leg isn't right. This is AI art. I just type in the prompt, for those of you who don't know how this works, I type in, for these videos, it's a 17th century Scottish funeral dirge, but it was written uh, for this place, Rosalind Castle, which has a dark, dark past. So I typed in 1700s uh, castle, dark forest, night, sometimes I wanted a night in there, fog, nighttime, full moon, and it would generate these images. And some of them are pretty good, honestly. And some of it's got kind of something a little off about it, but I digressed. That's not what this video was about, uh, but I, I'm not gonna repeat myself. Keep in the light. The other stuff exists. They can attack you, attack your loved ones, Directly, like I was attacked, or indirectly, like try to ruin somebody's marriage, or cause somebody to lose their faith, or pull somebody away from their faith. Um, you keep that light in you, that light as that is Jesus Christ on the cross, and the love that is His personality for us and for for you. Keep it, and, you know. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So, all right, good night.